Hi, my name is Gerard Dache. I'm the executive director of the Government Blockchain Association. Uh, we are uh, just super excited today. We're going to have a demonstration about how artificial intelligence can be used in order to um, in order to uh, secure uh, networks. And so, with it today, we've got uh, folks from um, uh, Ezotech, and they're going to be demonstrating their their product and service. Uh, and then at the end, we'll uh, open this up for for questions. So. Uh, Chris Dosen team, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you, Gerard, and uh, and I'll take I'll take a second to introduce myself. Uh, I uh, my name is Christos Salatis. I am the CEO of Ezotech. It's a, and as I said, it's a pleasure to be here and meet everyone today. And Gerard, uh, because of uh, uh, the timing, I'm just going to jump. I'll just jump right in, uh, and I will. Omit a couple of the slides today, or or a few of the slides that I had, and just uh, work. I've been working on something new here, so bear with me. And I think this will, uh, um, I think this will work out better. So, what what most people don't understand in their organizations today is that criminal organizations are already using highly automated attack tools to execute ransomware attacks and other campaigns successfully. In Gardner's latest security hype cycle, autonomous pen testing is a rising category. Recognizing the potential for applying machine learning and AI to conduct offensive cyber operations. It's all because it's only a matter of time before criminals leverage autonomous attacks and techniques in, this, in, in the marketplace. As an industry, therefore, as an industry, we must prepare for the technological leap that ransomware as a service and similar nefarious platforms are about to take. So what we see in the near term, we see automated attacks continue to decimate security organizations that have deployed the latest tools because we don't have a tools problem, we have an effectiveness problem. Our many silo security tools are not designed to work together, and that's and and the seams between those tools equate to blind spots attackers exploit. In the midterm, sadly, we believe things are going to get worse. Gerard. Attackers will shift to autonomous attack platforms faster than defenders can improve the effectiveness of their security posture. And lastly, in the long term, within a decade or so, we believe. Cyber warfare will be humans by exception. Human defenders simply cannot keep pace with how quickly attack algorithms can compromise the network. This is compounded with the fact that algorithmic attack significantly reduces the barriers to entry for threat actors, which will therefore increase the volume of attacks in, within all industries. Therefore, we believe machine speed is the ultimate disruptor. Algorithmic centric attacks can make a hundred times more maneuverable decisions per minute than human centric defenders. Humans must shift through logs, cognitively process alerts, get permissions to apply uh, fixed actions. They need to eat, they need to sleep. Machines don't need to do this. By the time this human driven triage process has been executed, Attack algorithms have already adapted. In five years, an algorithm attack could execute 100,000 times more decisions per minute than human-centric defense, effectively rendering current security products completely obsolete. Algorithmic cyber warfare will come down to maneuver, dis, maneuver decisions per minute. How many decisions can an attack algorithm make and how quickly can defensive algorithms anticipate and react to stifle the compromise. Therefore, the next generation of security tools will be designed for humans out of the loop, enabled by cloud-first IT environments that are inherently observable, segmented, revocable, and defensible, which are prerequisites for autonomous defense. Therefore, what's our vision? Autonomous pen testing enable our, our vision is autonomous pen testing, enabling organizations to see themselves through the eyes of the attacker. With the attacker's perspective, enterprises can continuously identify their ineffective security controls and identify critical exploitable weaknesses that they must immediately fix. 
However, autonomous pen testing is only part of the equation. Hey, hey Chris, Our, can I interrupt you for one second? Sure. Um, we're seeing sort of the cover slide. Are you moving through the slide deck or are you? No, I am not. Okay, not. all right. I, I purposely did not because uh, for time. Yeah. Wait, I just wanted to we, all right. No problem. Therefore, we deliver continuous attack, uh, <laughs> continuous attacks that that execute an integral uh, uh, learning loop that gets smarter with every interaction delivered as an autonomous security platform. With Tanuki as a text core product, at the heart of our autonomous pen testing platform the, is the critical data structure required to build autonomous security within every pen testing, within, within every pen test executed. Tanuki gets smarter. It increases its understanding of how an attacker, an attacker can chain together harvested credentials, misconfigurations, dangerous product defaults, and exploitable vulnerabilities to compromise a system. Collective intelligence service analysis, uh, analyze these insights and further optimize the attack algorithms. Thus, the more autonomous pen tests we run, the richer our collective intelligence becomes, which leads to more effective and efficient attack algorithms. We see the journey, be, we see our journey begins with the following, becoming the most trusted autonomous pen testing platform in the industry. Our initial focus is to deliver autonomous pen testing capabilities to help customers quickly find, fix, and verify the remediation of critical security weaknesses. Think about, think about it this way, pen testing on Thursday that verifies pat, the patch Oh, sorry, that verifies patch Wednesday was successful. Our, our initial product focus is to give IT administrators and network engineers security superpowers, enabling them to continuously as, assess their enterprise of security and, com and compliance postures with the skills of a 20-year pen test veteran, but at a fraction of the cost and effort. Therefore, by mastering the art of attack, we and our customers will master the art of defense. And that really is the ethos of what we do at, at Azotech. Our goal, is, our goal is to make sure, as we've discussed, uh, Gerard, our goal is to make sure that all our customers and anyone in the industry can test and retest at, as necessary, which of course we all know is impossible because of budgets. And now let's jump into the demo. Mike, please take the screen if you can. Are you, if you're allowed to take the screen or I'll stop sharing. Yeah, I think so. Hold on. Let me okay. See. And hopefully I've left you enough time. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Sure. Um, can you guys see my screen? I guess before I begin. <laughs> yeah, we sure can. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, so yeah, so this is, uh, this is Tanuki and I've got a couple things pulled up on my screen right now. Um, I've got the, the dashboard. So this is what the clients, our clients to use to interface with Tanuki. And then over here, this is actually the back end of Tanuki. So normally you would never see this from the dashboard, but um, I like to show it off in demonstrations just so that you get an idea of what's happening underneath the hood. So before I dive into actually running a penetration test, I, I think it's important for me to provide a little bit of context in and around the architectural decisions of, of Tanuki and how it's kind of working. You'll notice here this map of the world, and this map of the world is to actually show off the global presence of Tanuki. I'm logged in right now to um, one, of our, one of our customers' accounts, and uh, this, these are the systems that they can use to, to test their environment. And the reason that we deployed systems all over the world is um, really uh, so that we can better prepare our customers um, for the, the modern day threat actor, because modern day threat actor is not launching their attacks from just one location. Normally they would be using compromised systems to do this. So they might, you know, pick like some low hanging fruit type of vulnerability, scan the internet, compromise a bunch of systems, uh, amass an army of infected computers, and then use this army of infected computers to then go after um, corporations for maybe ransomware operations or for maybe um, espionage or whatever their, their objective might be. And so what we've done is rather than, of course, you know, stealing hardware or stealing services from, from people out there on the internet, um, we've gone ahead and deployed 
um, deployed systems all over the place. And each one of these systems is running a Tanuki. So they are all um, uh, seen here in the, in, the back, in the back end here, these different IDs. And uh, these systems are in constant communication with each other. And what they're doing is they're actually coordinating. To, at, at its core, Tanuki has a decision engine. And this decision, decision, yeah, decision engine is using uh, deep artificial neural networks uh, to look at the, the, the organization that they're testing and decide based off what information it knows at that current point in time, what the next best move might be in terms of gaining unauthorized access. And so when you're watching this today, uh, I want you to think that Tanuki's, um, every action that Tanuki is doing, uh, it is, it is uh, going through a process where it is deciding what that action should be measuring the effectiveness of that action and um and then uh reassessing where it's landed based off of the new information it's it's gathered um so right now i've just toggled over to the settings panel here and uh the reason i want to show you this is i just want to show you how easy it is to actually set up a penetration test so um from a customer perspective all you're really needing to do is copy and paste IP addresses or host names or URLs or whatever it is that you want to test into this box here. And then you'll get a, you know, a bunch of these rows show up where you can enable or disable systems at a click of a button. Uh, right now, we're just going to be testing this one individual system. Um, but the reconnaissance and all the other different things that you see today are actually going to be reflective of a real penetration test. So we are actually targeting a real company. Um, there are certain things that I cannot simulate in a demo, such as going out to Google and going through social media and things to that nature. Um, but it's, it's important for you guys to see that. And then uh, some of the other things that I've done here is I've just enabled password guessing. I've, I've, I've included that inside of the, the testing scope uh, and I've left recon on. And uh, when I, whenever you're ready with these settings, you just hit save and you're basically good to go. So. We've tried to make the dashboard super streamlined, intuitive, easy to use. Um, so regardless of your skill set, regardless of what your background is, um, you know, if, you, if you've ever gone online and ordered a pizza, then you should be able to use the dashboard and launch a penetration test. And uh, what I just did there is I just hit start and that's, that's it. So that starts the penetration test. And you can see in the background here, Tanuki actually reacting to the fact that I did that. And it's now going through and running, running around and looking for bits of information on this organization that we're testing. And uh, these results will show up in real time over here on the engagements panel. And every single finding that um, gets reported on um, it, it is gonna fall into one of these six categories. Either it's, got, it's critical in risk or it's maybe just informational. Um, some of them, the informational things might not even really be vulnerabilities, but it's information that an attacker would find useful. And our goal here is to look at your organization through the eyes of an attack, right? And so knowing things like who works there and what are their hours and who do they report to and um, you know, what's, what's their level of responsibility, all that sort of information about um, the organization, the corporate structure, that's all useful information to an attacker because we all know that you know, social engineering and phishing emails and things like that, that's the number one way into networks uh, at this point in time. And, Attackers know this, and they're they're employing this these strategies um, simply because the barrier to entry again, right? Like you can either sit back and you know try and reverse engineer a firmware of some embedded device and come up with a zero day vulnerability or something, or you can you know send a word document. Yeah, you know what's easier. Um, but yeah, just to give an idea of some of the things that Tinky's doing. Um, so this finding here, employee profiles identified. What Tinky did is it it runs a browser just like a human. And in this case, what it decided to do is it decided to go out to Google and, and do some very targeted Google searches. Um, and what it's trying to do here is it's trying to come up with lists of, of employee names and people that work at this organization. Uh, and you can see some of the names of, of, of the people that work at this company uh, returned uh, through that query. And so one other thing I wanna mention about the AI and the machine learning. So there's the core decision engine, yeah? Um, but then on, a, on an action level or a module, we call them modules. Uh, so on a module level, there can also be machine learning if it's appropriate to include it. So um, in some cases, you know, regular automation might do the trick. 
Um, maybe it, the the objective is to crawl uh, a web a website or something like that. And you know, you can you can get by with with uh, maybe with, with a couple of machine learning models to help facilitate that. But there's a lot of automation involved. There. In other cases, it might be that you know image recognition is something that's required in order to get past some sticking point that regular automation sort of falls short of it. And in the event of you know autom automatically scraping Google results, you know you'll you'll get those you'll you'll engage Google's anti-bot technology where they have you know the recapture challenges that pop up with pictures of you know, bicycles or cars or whatever it is. And Tanuki needs to be smart enough to be able to get around that stuff. Another example would be a login portal with a captcha, right? That's a machine learning problem, um, something that Tanuki would need to be able to solve in order to actually log into that that login portal. So as you're watching this, just understand that there's there's many different models that are actually in, in work here, um, and they're all kind of working together in, in, in orchestration to to allow for um, uh, this this penetration test to ha actually happen. And because of that, I'm not actually sure what Tanuki is going to be doing next. So I'm kind of just sitting here and I'm watching Tanuki, and I'm, I'm con more so commenting on it because every single time I've done do this demo, it, it usually takes a different path. One other thing I'll mention though, um, while it's running through this engagement is each individual finding that uh, we ever record is going to have an observation, like what did it actually see? An implication, why is this, um, why is this bad? And, uh, and then we have also the findings, like what the actual findings were. And we also have a mitigation and which systems it might affect. In this case here, um, what Tanuki did is it went through and looked um, looked uh, around inside of our repository of leaked emails and passwords to try and discover credentials for employees. So very stealthy sort of technique to use here because no packets are actually being sent to any target systems. Um, so the administrators of this organization would have no idea um, that someone is doing this sort of research on them, right? And our repository actually consists of 23 billion leaked emails and passwords. So it's one of the largest repositories in the world. Um, one of the more popular, well-known repositories might be uh, um, Have I Been Pwned? Uh, and I believe last time I looked at their record count, they had 11 billion. So we're, we're double and then some of Have I Been Pwned? Uh, and Tanuki uses this information. So whenever it comes up against uh, um, you know, an opportunity to maybe use an account, it might lean on one of the passwords it was able to, to harvest uh, during this reconnaissance effort. And uh, one of the other things that's kind of nice about this platform um, is the ability to generate penetration test reports. So in a former life, I used to do penetration tests, you know, back to back to back to back to back for basically like 15 years. And uh, I got to tell you, it, you get quite a bit of burnout from writing these reports. They're not fun to write. I love the hacking side of it. Do not like the reporting side of it. But um, one of the nice things about this platform is there's no need to ever worry about those reports and worry about the time that's involved to actually uh, produce these reports. So with a click of a button, you can actually generate a full-blown penetration test report. And some of our partners actually hand these reports off to their customers without even telling them that an AI just conducted the penetration test. And the customers are none the wiser. Um, so to some degree, we feel like that gives a lot of credibility to the platform and its reporting engine uh, because no one can really tell that it was even generated by uh, just automatically with a click of a button. Um, so I'm just kind of scrolling through here and you can see that there's, you know, there's a lot of information in here. There's vulnerability analysis, mitigations, um, and then each individual finding gets copied in um, along with screenshots. And this is another thing that I would like to highlight is um, Tanuki will include any evidence it possibly can. In some cases, it, it involves a screenshot. In other cases, you know, a screenshot might not be, might not be possible. Um, but it's, it's uh, including this information to prove that this vulnerability was exploitable. Um, so this is another thing that really separates, you know, penetration testing in general from vulnerability assessments. Is in a vulnerability assessment, there's a lot of assumptions that are made. You know, you know, you might be looking at like a banner of a web server and just assume because you know, hey, this web server has got uh, an outdated version that it therefore must be vulnerable to X, Y, and Z. But oftentimes, not all the requirements are are really met for exploitation to occur. And so Tanuki's actually going through with the attacks. 
it's going and trying to uh, stage whatever payload it needs to or whatever actions it needs to to uh, prove the business impact that successful exploitation might have. Um, so through this process, we essentially uh, are eliminating false positives out of these, uh, out of these results. And um, so some of the other things that it's doing is, is it, because of the uh, neural networks and because of the different models that we've included here. Um, and really, if you look at the NIST definition for penetration testing, one of the features that's really important there is the concept of recursion, right? So an attacker, when going up against a system, they might chain together multiple vulnerabilities in order to gain access to a system. And a good example of this would be um, perhaps there is a, a, a backup file somewhere on a web server. Uh, inside that backup file, there's a configuration file with a password inside of it. That password might give you access to uh, a database server. Um, then inside of that database server, there might be more passwords that give you access to people's emails or a VPN, et cetera, et cetera. You can see how this sort of snowballs, right? And there's a lot of jumps that have to happen in order for an attacker to actually breach the perimeter of an organization. And so when we were designing this, one of the things that we wanted to be able to do with it is have Tanuki on its own connect the dots between those things. Uh, and that's where this decision engine um, has really come in and to, to be effective. Um, and it's using a form of a, like a reinforcement learning to actually achieve this and to make those correlations between certain data points. And this can happen in, in, in you know, subtle ways or very, very obvious ways. And so one example of this um, would be even something as simple so far that just looking at the results that we've got is even something as simple as identifying a naming convention with emails. So if I have a big list of, of, of employee names or people that work at a company, and then I've been able to successfully gather a couple emails, if I can observe a pattern of how those emails are structured, I can generate emails for people that I didn't even find their email, right? Um, so Tanuki is doing exactly this, is that every little piece of information that it's collecting throughout the engagement, um, it's, it's, it's analyzing that information. It's looking to see how it, how it might be able to connect dots on it. And then it's reporting on those findings, but then also using that information to help further its efforts in terms of gaining unauthorized access. And we can see now in the background, you know, it's, it's, it's getting pretty active. Um, it's gone through, it's, it's finding more and more vulnerabilities as, as time go on. And, and, and some of these vulnerabilities, again, are, you know, like, uh, not as exciting. Like in this case, they have already been exposed to the internet. That's not a good idea. You know, you shouldn't do that. Um, it's been able to uh, report on some, some login portals, some login portal here, um, you know, and, and this is just general observations that it's making, but this is really, really important from an attacker perspective. And I guess to talk more about some of the other models that are involved here, um, even the, 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 the process of, of being able to classify content that it's seeing on a web page was a, was a big endeavor for us to, to create that, right? So we had to uh, essentially give Tanuki eyeballs, right? So it could tell the difference between a search form, uh, a comment box, a login form, um, you know, a, a shopping cart, all these different types of forms. And then even the form parameters are things that Tanuki is looking at. Because from an attacker perspective, um, when, you are, when you are looking to maybe uh, stage different attacks against forms, you know, the way that you target a comment box is going to be a lot different than the way that you target a login form, right? Um, and Tanuki needs to be able to make those sort of differentiations between the two or multiple uh, classifications there um, in order to be effective with its time. Um, so that's another big concern here is like penetration testing is, is a very expensive process, not just from a monetary perspective, but from a time perspective. And normally when you look at penetration testing in general, um, because the time is so expensive and because the cost of the consulting is so expensive, a lot of organizations are shrinking the scope, the testing scope. They might have thousands of IP addresses out on the internet. So we've been working with, um, for instance, a, uh, an automotive um, uh, tier one automotive supplier out of Italy, you know, they make parts for, for Italian cars. Uh, and they have, uh, they have, they have a whole slash 16, 65,535 IPs, plus a couple other slash 24, some slash 22s. They had like a hundred thousand plus IP addresses out on the internet. And they had no idea what was, what was listening on these systems. 
And from a pen testing perspective, you can't, you can't pen test that many humanly. You cannot pen test that many IP addresses. Um, you, can, you can scan them, but you can't you know, do a deep dive on all these different IP addresses um, and, and be effective from a time perspective, unless you have like an army of humans, you know, really to, 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 to run that. So um, what we did with Tanuki was we were able to scale it out. And I showed you that map earlier on where Tanuki had all these different systems all over the world. Um, and uh, uh, it, was, it was able to actually consume that entire massive network and uh, find all sorts of vulnerabilities and chain together all sorts of vulnerabilities um, uh, uh, and, and actually gain unauthorized access to those systems. So um, a lot of organizations would fall into that category where they, you know, historically they have not been able to actually pen test um, that many systems before. And now all of a sudden they're able to eliminate all these blind spots off their network. And I was talking earlier about social engineering. So one of the things that we also deemed important with this, with this platform was the ability to actually run social engineering engagements um, on, on, the, on, on the platform, right? And make it easy for people to set this up. So uh, here, what I'm doing is I'm just enabling some emails. And uh, what I'm gonna do down here is we did see that there was a login portal that we found earlier. So this would be perfect from, a, from an attacker perspective um, to set up a phishing page with, right? Uh, you you want to make these, you know, as realistic as possible. So we'll just we'll just look at this IP address here. We'll just copy that, and just so you can see that I'm visiting that right here. So we'll go back over to the settings, and I'll I'll literally just tell Tanuki to clone that page, and it will go ahead and and do it all for me. And another thing from a time perspective, you know, setting these types of phishing engagements up, this takes effort, right? Um, I mean, like, yes, you can work off templates and things like that, but there's always different nuances and, and subtleties between between people's uh, like Office 365 and like whether if they're using Gmail, if they're using this or if they're using that, you know? And so it's really it's really cool that we can just like point to Nuki at it and it will just figure out how to, how to clone that page for us. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just going ahead and, and setting up, uh, um, a mailer, I picked an email template. Of course, we could use custom templates. We could use custom custom mailers. Um, and uh, when we're ready, we can, we can just go ahead and, and blast, these, blast these emails. And so that's nice and easy. And I actually have a uh, virtual machine set up over here. I've just got a VNC connection into it. You can see timestamp just received this message, message 343, 343. And uh, this is just using that, that, that template, some unusual sign-in activity. I'm gonna go ahead and, and click that link. And um, what you'll see is a, a, this basically like a self-signed certificate in this case, to, that's just because we're in this demo environment, but of course in production, we would have you know, valid, valid SSL certificates. And uh, when I go through, we'll see that we get brought to the, the phishing page. Now, what's interesting about this is the detail that Tanuki goes into. So if I sign out here, you can see even the URL path, right? So this is the real login portal, the URL path, OWA off login ASPX. Tanuki was smart enough to replicate that, right? So all the details uh, that you would expect to get copied across were copied across directory structure and everything, all with a click of a button that just, this literally just spawned right now live in front of your eyes. And uh, even one, one subtle difference though, is that um, Tanuki is also looking to attack the client, right? So the browser itself, is the browser vulnerable? And so if I go back over here and go to the engagements, we will see that, that simply by clicking on that link, we were able to, we were able to uh, uh, grab uh, the user's password off of that computer. Right, so they haven't even done anything. That, that could have been like a newsletter or like just anything, right? You, as long as you're just getting someone to click on something. And this is why I always tell people to be very skeptical about what they click on, right? Because browsers can be vulnerable too. They can have vulnerabilities, outdated plugins or just missing a patch or something like that. And all of a sudden there's a use after free vulnerability or something. And, um, and, then, all, and then now an attacker has remote access or, or access to sensitive information such as like a password or something like that. Now, um, I did say earlier that <laughs> I'm going to be kind of jumping around here because I'm not sure what Tanuki is going to be doing next. Um, 
and I gotta I gotta stay talking, but I do I do see in the background here, uh, you know, Tanuki doing some stuff. It, it looks like it's actually breached that OWA service. Um, so I'm gonna get, go back to the social here in a second, but I want to touch on this quickly. Um, so we can see here that you know Tanuki was able to guess, looks like guess two different passwords. And we have screenshots to prove that it gained access to these emails. Um, but how it did this is really interesting, right? So um, we, we got a couple of findings. First off, you know, there's no two-factor authentication, so that's not good. You can just like log in right to these emails. And, um, uh, but, and then the other thing too, is that if you can guess a password, obviously those passwords are weak, right? So we see this finding kind of show up twice in two different contexts. Um, but what's really interesting is actually how Tanuki put this attack together. So if we look at this login portal again and look carefully here, there's, there's some clues as to how you actually have to interface with this. It's not actually asking you for an email address, right? Uh, it's asking you for a domain and a username and then a password. So three pieces to this puzzle in order for you to actually gain access to it. So the first thing Tanuki needs to do, and I touched on this earlier, was it needs to classify that it's looking at a login portal. The next thing it needs to do is it needs to be able to understand what the requirements are for this login portal. And then once it knows the requirements of this login portal, it can either go out and start staging new attacks to try and solve those requirements, or it can look at the attacks that's already done in the output of those attacks and piece together stuff, historical information that it's collected during this engagement. And so what we see here is the first thing to solve is actually the domain, right? So like, let's just go in order here, domain, username, and password. And if you look down here, um, let's see, maybe it's up here, there it is, SMTP Active Directory Domain Enumeration. So uh, on, on the server, and this could, have been, this could have been any other system, right? That's connected to the same domain. Um, but Tanuki was able to actually interface with this SMTP service and uh, attack it in such a way that it leaked the internal domain. So it's an, uh, it's an information disclosure vulnerability, um, although Microsoft says it's a feature, not a bug, um, of course. Uh, but in this case here, uh, we can see that where my mouse is, the internal domain name being leaked as intranet. And you can also tell that Tanuki used this information when it was logging in to these accounts here because it's, it's actually showing that the, the, the domain with, along with the username that it used. Um, so using a completely different vulnerability, it was able to actually gain that, that context, that understanding of the login program. So the next thing is the username. And uh, uh, spoiler alert, I, you know, I touched on the, <laughs> I specifically highlighted the employees that it was finding earlier on because that's exactly what Tanuki is going to be using as input here, is it's going to be using names of people and emails it collects. And then it identified that email naming convention by observing patterns and the way that those emails matched up and paired with names. And so it's also smart enough to understand, you know, the difference between a first name and a last name and, and also pick out complex sort of patterns that might be, you know, obvious to humans, but difficult for machines to understand. So first initial, last name, um, maybe it's last name, um, and then first initial, you know, like whatever, whatever the setup might be. Tanuki has been very, very successful at actually identifying that and then being able to match that up and then get an understanding of what the Active Directory usernames might be for this, for this company. So as a best guess, um, right now, the best guess for a username is going to be just the first name of, of uh, an employee. And then the final piece of the puzzle here is passwords. Now, there's two ways we could go about doing this. We could sit there and you know, wait until next year and literally try millions and millions of passwords um, against the system and likely get caught and likely not be very successful and uh, you know, waste a lot of time. Or um, as an attacker, what we could do is we could, be, we could be clever. We could look at, okay, well, where's this company, where's this company located? What's a popular sports team in the area? What street are they on? You know, what's what's the industry that they're working in? Are they in the, are are they in the accounting industry? Oh, okay, cool. Like maybe accounting with the year or something like that. Or are they in agriculture? Okay, yeah, maybe like words in and around agriculture. Harvest might be a good one, right? So what Tanuki is doing here is it's trying to generate custom passwords specifically for this organization. And in this case, it generated seventy password variations. And so when all of this comes together, 
what we see now is a very humanistic attack. And I don't even know if humanistic is even a word, but it's very human-like, right? Uh, it's their strategy in the way that it actually implemented this attack. And what that led to, of course, is unauthorized access to email. And these, these here, these are sort of password masks. So that's not actually what the password is. Um, it's just a representation of what that password is. So U for uppercase char uh, characters, uh, L for lowercase characters, N for number. And if you ever saw an S, it would be for special. And I'm about to show you uh, the fish credentials anyway, so you'll see that. But uh, yeah, so it gained unauthorized access. And then once it gained unauthorized access to this email, we can see another finding here where it actually used that authenticated session to stage a remote code execution attack against the system where it was able to execute the program mshta.exe and use that to then download a malicious HTA file, which uh, then basically just was a benign file and it harvested some information off the system to prove that this is not a false positive. This is a real vulnerability that's exploitable. And so we see here it's going to gain system level privileges. And then we got the host name, we got the version of Windows, we got the internal IP address as evidence. And so really, if you step back for a second here, what have we done? All we did was copy and pasted some IP addresses into a target list, enabled password guessing, said, yeah, we want recon and hit start. And Tanuki went out and staged a very intelligent attack uh, against this organization uh, all on its own, right? So it's a very powerful platform, very dangerous, really, if you, if, if, uh, if you look at it, uh, because of how automated this is, how autonomous this is. And so if we regenerate this report, um, we will see now that this report is you know, a lot longer than what it was <laughs> when I generated it at the beginning. I think it was like 25 pages and now we're at 62 pages. And a lot of this stuff is gonna be kind of in the same, same format, right? Like we got the index, we got the introduction, you know, when we launched this engagement, some of the things that were in scope based off the settings, uh, risk rating methodology, um, that's just boilerplate. The executive summary here though, this is, this is auto, are generated based off of, you know, some of the findings that it was able to, to pick up on some things that are a little more serious, right? You got weak passwords and uh, you, that, that exchange server is vulnerable to remote code execution. Um, you know, we've got the graphs updated in here. If we go down further, we even got some of the, the phishing stuff and I'm gonna continue with that in a second. Um, but those phishing stats and, uh, and then if we go down to the vulnerability analysis and mitigation section, we'll see these vulnerabilities get copied in here. Um, along with like, you know, the systems that, that, that are affected. There's that hash that we got just by clicking that link. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and continue with that social engineering. So we're kind of jumping around here, but um, uh, we're, so we've clicked the link where that, where that user, okay. Yeah. Uh, some sort of, um, what was it? It was a, it was a, a suspicious activity, right? So um, now I'm, I'm seeing this page. Let's say, let's say I actually fall for it, right? And the person falls for it and they go ahead and they put in a real password. And uh, conveniently, Tanuki copied the, the JavaScript across. It's all functional, it's all working. And so we can see here this person's password, hard password. It's not something that would be, although it's ironically, it would be difficult to guess just because of the length and, and you know, all the different at signs and things like that. Definitely not something you'd find in 70 passwords, but um, nonetheless, uh, uh, we see our hard password here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull this screen across here because I want to be able to show you in real time what Tanuki is going to do with this information. Um, when, when, when a user submits a password, they're effectively submitting a new data point to the inputs that the deep neural network is going to consume, right? Um, and so uh, this, ha this happens with a vulnerability or any time that a human is interacting with, with, with it um, from a social engineering perspective. So I go ahead and I'm going to hit sign in. And then very quickly, you can see in real time, Tanuki's like, oh, thanks. Uh, that password that you just submitted, I'm gonna try that against that RDP service right away. And then we can also see that it's gonna do some stuff against OWA as well. We can see OWA attempting to log into OWA using that password, OWA access achieved. So this user actually part of the GPO settings, they can't log into that RDP server. They're, they don't have permission, uh, but they of course can access their email. So Tanuki used that information right on the fly to then further its efforts. So it's interacting in real time with uh, social engineering. Um, 
and this this again of course will show up on the dashboard uh, so if i reload this we can see we guessed two passwords but we got o owa access three times and the third time was using the credentials that were just submitted so we don't stop there though we at the end of the day what an attacker really wants is they want they want execute permissions read write execute permissions on your computer right it's nice to have passwords it really is and and using passwords you can get to read write execute permissions but at the end of the day you want those read write execute permissions access is god so in this case what we're trying to do now or what tanuki's trying to do is coerce this user into doing something he really shouldn't do which is uh, launching a trojan on their computer so when i hit this launch button here we'll see this this is a quick little you know you, you click three things like and and it looks like oh come on who's going to actually do that but you would be shocked at how many people fall for stuff like this um you know I, I, averaging when we uh are running these types of engagements uh, against our clients um we see sometimes upwards to 50 percent infection rate across thousands of, of emails that's a huge number that's a lot of access for um people or for an attacker to gain and so here we got this like you know fake secure your account thing uh but this is just really to make the user feel like they're doing something legitimate while it's completely illegitimate um and what's happening in the background is is Tanuki is uh, doing a little bit of situational awareness it doesn't want to get caught by antivirus or endpoint protection or whatever and um and then after once once the coast is clear it'll decrypt itself and then it will uh fire across proof again tangible evidence that cannot be disputed that it was there on that system so we got a screenshot and we have also got a bunch of accounting here so we got the desktop the, the host name we got the version of windows we got the timestamp of when this infection happened we got the user that was logged into that system we even have the email that that payload was sent to and the internal ip address so you can see very quickly in a couple of clicks of a button um, on this dashboard that we have now successfully penetration or done a penetration test against a company. And you can imagine if this company had, you know, a lot more attack surface, let's say like hundreds of thousands of systems. Well, that's okay, right? We can just throw more bots at it. We can throw more Tanukis at it and many hands makes light work. So typically what we're seeing is regardless of the size of the network, about 24 to 48 hour turnaround on these penetration tests. And that's because Tanuki can think very quickly it can connect the dots very quickly and it can do like 20 30 100 things all at once whereas a human is kind of limited to a degree i mean a human can be more creative i will say that right right like a human can go through and do like zero day research and really like you know um uh, learn the social side of things that better than 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 ai can nowadays right we're not 100 percent there with the ai yet and that's not tanuki's fault that's just this you know state of the state of the art right um but i mean from from a speed perspective and from from the perspective of being able to consume large volumes of information very quickly um yeah there's no, there's no comparison and I, I think one of the things that really articulates this is even just how it reacted in real time when i submitted that password a human imagine imagine trying to digest you're sitting there at your desk and you're waiting you just launched your phishing attack and you're waiting for all this information to come back people submitting passwords you get 50 passwords at once well you can't react to all that information that fast but tanuki can keep up so i know that this was very much an infrastructure sort of um pen test that we just did uh there was some aspect of social but there's also web application testing that tanuki can do as well um for the purpose of a demo today uh you know i wasn't able to go over all the different things that tanuki can do there's a lot of stuff that we've been you know incorporated we've been developing this for like five years um but uh, I hope that that gives you at least a preview of what Tanuki's capabilities are. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. That, that was Bye. amazing. If, if anybody would like additional information on Tanuki, send us a, an email to support at gbaglobal.org. Uh, and then in the, in the uh, subject, just put pen, pen test, and we'll get all that information over to these guys. Um, but let, let me open it up for questions uh, right now. Anybody have any questions? That we, we, and if you have to drop it, actually, right actually, Gerard, before before you go there, the one thing Mike forgot to say was that uh, although we call this a, a demo, 
it's an actual pen test. Uh, he, he mentioned that it's the environment of one of our customers that we've cloned. Uh, but when uh, when we when we conducted the manual pen test, this is approximately three days worth of work that that we we presented today. So I think that's very important for people to understand, especially if you don't have background in pen testing. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I think it's amazing. But I, um, let me open, but again, if you want any more information or you'd like to pursue it, like I said, support at gbaglobal.org, pen test in the subject line, and we'll get you we'll get you connected and all that stuff. But for right now, questions, comments, what do you guys think? Let me just look, kind of leave the floor open for you guys. Yeah, and I forgot your first name, uh, Loud, uh, Jay Loudon. Hi, Jennifer, no worries. Jennifer. Um, so I have a question. Um, so again, I'm, I'm in critical infrastructure um, and I was wondering, have you been able to, and apologies if, if I just missed it, um, have you been able to look at um, pen testing both IT and OT for companies that do have that, that accessibility on both sides? Yeah, so we, we've, um, it's funny that you asked that. So we've been, we've been engaged with uh, um, a large manufacturer in the OT space um, who wanted to partner with us to actually help mature that side of Tanuki. Um, at this point, of the IT side is what we were started with. So the IT side is more matured than the OT side of things. Uh, but Tanuki does have the ability to go and test um, some components of the OT environment. Although one thing I will say is because critical infrastructure is, you know, critical infrastructure, um, you got to be really careful when you're doing a penetration tests against uh, those types of environments. So we get really involved in those processes um, just so that we can ensure that the positioning of Tanuki is, is set up properly. And uh, we like to work really closely with, with, with the clients um, when they have those types of environments for us to test. So, um, but there are capabilities there for Tanuki and, um, we have uh, an initiative to improve those capabilities and make those capabilities more, more complete. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's something that we, we've been actively working on for the last little while. Awesome. Thank you. I, uh, I may be in touch. J Jasmine, the floor is yours. Hey, everyone. Great. Just great presentation today. Thank you all. Um, my question and, and my understanding of what Tanuki is, I'm thinking of it as like an AI powered automated white hat hacker in a sense, right? And so the burning question I had was, um, what type, if I'm an organization and I'm looking for information security, if I come up to you all, uh, what type of information do I have to give on the, on the back end? Like what's the input data that I have to give so that we can register where the vulnerabilities in my organization lies? Yeah, so from a setup perspective, it takes all bit like, assuming the right information is there, it's like it can be done in almost 10 minutes. Um, it really, what we need is just scoping information. One thing that um, we, we made sure of with Tanuki is we didn't want it to just like make assumptions about what in, uh, you know, systems an organization might own like, because of legality, right? Like we don't want to test stuff that they don't own. Um, so it's really important that we just predefine that scope, those IP addresses or host names or URLs that the company is allowed to test. And then once we have that information, it's just literally copying and pasting that into the settings panel and then hitting start. And that's it. So in some cases, it can be done very quickly. Um, in other cases, we see that sometimes customers that we work with, they don't even know what they own. So we sometimes will help <laughs> out with that process as well. William, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I did, and this was fantastic, and I, I can see how powerful it would be in the wrong hands. Um, I was wondering, uh, do your clients typically just go with the uh, with Tanuki, or do they usually supplement it with an additional uh, human pen tester? And, and if they do, would, would your team be part of that? Yeah, so in some cases, I mean, like we would say, I'll say this, Tanuki from an external penetration testing and social engineering perspective, can do 100% of the job. Um, from web applications, uh, because web applications are basically snowflakes, um, there are situations where Tanuki is great for, for that web application, depending on how it's built. And there are situations where maybe it's, it's an authenticated web application and a human needs to, to come in. And so what we'll do is like sort of a hybrid 
type engagement where Tanuki does maybe 50% or 60% or 70% of the work and then human might pick up after that. And we have the expertise in house to do that. And then the other side of that is the internal penetration testing. So at this point in time, uh, we don't have internal uh, capabilities with our, our, with, with our production release, although we are working towards internal capabilities and going back to the OT question that, that was uh, offered up earlier, that's part of that, right? Being able to test like air gap networks and things like that. Um, but what we do right now is we'll come in and we'll, we'll, we can perform those internal engagements as well. Um, so it really depends on, on the testing situation. Um, you know, if there's a hardware review, like Tanuki can't, you know, physically test hardware. <laughs> so like a yeah, human has to do that. Right. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all situational, but from an external and social engineering perspective, Tanuki can take care of that. And we employ uh, or implore our customers to, to leverage Tanuki to do that on a regular basis as well. Right. So one of the great things about this is because it's all driven by code is it can be ran on a schedule. And that schedule can then look out uh, on your perimeter, watch your network, see how things change, and uh, and uh, you know kind of identify those vulnerabilities and blind spots before attackers find them. Right. So great. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Do you sorry? Do you see any use or application uh, with this in uh, in your uh, in your area, your region? Yeah, you're absolutely. It's a great presentation, actually, and. Uh, and a lot of information. Um, 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 despite my, th th this, is like um, my my question was about if if we are dealing with uh, with a big organizations that that's host give hosting emails and and so some some like GoDaddy and Site One Two Three and others are those also vulnerable for such attacks because they already have their red teams and blue teams and and their own cybersecurity uh, arrangements. So. Um, uh, most of the companies or startups uh, doing uh, um, these websites and, and web based on 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 such companies it, it, is it is it is it also or something um, they have to take care of or 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 is it uh, 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 vulnerable for for attacks? This is my question. Yeah. yeah. So when you look at larger companies like that that have their own internal red teams and blue teams. Um, those teams basically have to operate like a small company within that big organization. And there's usually a significant amount of work that those guys are being uh, taxed with uh, or responsible for uh, in terms of safeguarding the network. So what ends up happening, and we've seen this, um, you know, working with uh, oil companies, we, we, we actually work with a um, uh, uh, or are engaged with an oil company and this, this oil company has uh, a red team, they, they have app testers, they have infrastructure testers, they have all these different um, testers that, that are, that are in place. They, they have like a bench of 100, 100 plus people on staff to do this full time. And even then with that, with that large amount of human resource behind them, they still can't check all, all parts of their network. So what they have to do is they have to basically, the, the, like a different departments, let's say like a, a, the accounting department or the HR department or whoever, Will come to them and be like hey we want this we want this app tested or we want this thing tested uh and they they have to make a case they have to plead with them and be like hey like you know this is why it's critical blah 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 and they might get rejected because they simply don't have the human resources to keep up with the demand internally and with their own company so this is a great spot for tanuki to augment that effort because all those other uh applications or corners of the network that typically get neglected in those larger organizations, Tanuki can take care of them um, uh, for, for them instead, right? So it helps bolster that human resource that they have internally. It can, it can also do it can also do 50 to 60% of their jobs for them and allow them just to do the complicated portions of it. Well, appreciate you setting all this up, Jared. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Jared. It's been great. Well, I think I think you bring great value to the to the whole, really to the whole. I can't even say industry, right? I mean, everybody needs to secure their systems, and this is just an uh, just a fantastic thing. So, with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end it. Hope you guys have a bodacious rest of your day, and keep your eyes open. Uh, if if you're not subscribed to the GBA newsletter, please subscribe. That way, you can get updates on everything. And by all means, please subscribe to the GBA YouTube channel uh, so you can get notified when we uh, when we post this 
um, when we post this uh, video and uh, plus all the others. All right. So with that, have a great day, everybody.